Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget from NYC CNC. Today we're gonna make a Glock sight pusher tool. Uh, this is half fun, half for, for real. Uh, we, as Saunders Machine Works, started machining, at first we started machining uh, RMRs onto Glocks, and we actually had a lot of success with that. Uh, so much so that we've now become a Trigicon dealer, so we get better pricing on RMRs and we can offer it as a package deal to customers. And then what happened was that folks were asking for sight modifications. The Glock factory sights are sort of so-so. Lots of folks like to put on night sights. Uh, Trigicon makes, I think, one of the best ones out there. But to put on a rear sight correctly, you need what's called a sight pusher. You can purchase them absolutely from anywhere from eBay to Brownells, uh, cheap to expensive. But I thought, you know, let's have some fun. Let's see if we can make one on the Tormach PCNC. So the usual process here, SolidWorks, Sprute Cam, Tormach. Um, the fun thing is, it might not work. Uh, this is a little bit different than the usual Wednesday widget or projects that we do because this one's got some uh, interrelated parts and there's some risk to it, but let's have some fun. I think we'll figure out, um, I think we'll, we'll get it working. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. Here is the design. You can see, so the idea is this block will be threaded with this half inch 13 threaded rod. The two ends here will be through holes and we'll just stick some cotter pins through there so that this piece, this rod stays in place. And as you turn it, it'll rotate this block left to right, which in theory um, should move this, this is the site right here. And the, the slide itself will be uh, somehow locked in place, probably with just the two quarter 20s right here. We'll figure it out. Um, but that's the idea. Again, the, the rotary motion of this screw translated into linear motion of this thing. So we'll start, start it all over here and, and use that to push the slide uh, sight into the dovetail. Quick bang through of the cam. Actually some good, I think, knock on wood, some good fixturing here. So uh, we're gonna start by machining a hole and then roughing out and then finishing this interior pocket. That will look like that. There's our hole, rough it out. and then clean up cut. Then what we'll do is we're gonna switch over to this fixture you see right here, and we will machine the, we will hold it on the inside, and that will let us clean up and machine the uh, outside. And you can see we'll, we'll, we'll use these in two, inside two faces as our X, Y, zero. So again, nothing fancy there. Then we will flip it over on each side and we'll drill the half inch through holes and the quarter 20 taps. That'll look something like this. Boom, boom, there's the half inch, number seven drill, and then tapping it quarter 20 like, so here you'll see a second. Boom, there it is. We'll flip it over, we'll do the same. And then for the, our, our little uh, slide pusher thing, the first thing we'll do is machine our whole, th oh, so what we're gonna do, we're, we're not need to thread this whole thing, that's unnecessary. So um, we're gonna drill all the way through with our pre-tap drill, 29 64ths. I think I've got these out of order here on the left, sorry. Boom, boom, boom. And then, yeah, sorry, I got them out of order. Oops, hold on, I'll be right back, I gotta fix this. Okay, sorry, I had the, um, somehow forgot to add that last part in there, which will be a clearance hole. Uh, what diameter is that? Yeah, 52, so 20 thou clearance over that. Then two more ops real quick here. We're going to actually, um, it's a little bit, you could cut this um, using a longer end mill coming here. Um, so with the end mill sort of like so, and, and trace this profile along this curve here. But instead what we're gonna do is actually waterline it, just like in this position. We're gonna do, the first waterline is, same tool by the way, a, th a 5 16 uh, Lakeshore Carbide. The first one, we are just intentionally, or setting it to be two depths of cut. So if we look, that will just do that right there. Then what we'll do is we'll come in with a finer scallop of, let's see, yeah, two and a half thou. And it looks like a lot, but we can move pretty fast. It's only a, I think it's a four or five minute, yeah, four minute operation. And that will do this. And 
And yeah, it'll leave a few ridges, but I don't think that'll hurt anything. We'll see. We can always fix it, change it, clean it up later, that type of thing. And again, I don't, I don't have to sit in front of the mill while it's running this. I don't, uh, you know, the problem if you do it the other way with the end mill 90 degrees from this and tracing, you know, tracing this curve here is you're going to end up with a, a radius in here. And I, I like this way. So then the last one is just a clearance for this uh, pocket here, which will let it ride. We look at the SolidWorks. That's what lets it track inside of this groove like so. So with that, let's head over to the mill and make some chips. Okay, here we go. Like I said, heck drilling. I'm drilling a little bit shorter. Someone just made the really good comment that I was taking 0.1 thou, or sorry, 100 thou steps before and dropping that in half should create shorter chips, which if you look, it sure is. And that prevents the bird's nest and, and so forth. That was quick. Um, now, 211. So I am, uh, well, actually, hold on one second. You know, if we watch, the trick we did in Spruit Pam is choose that hole in the actual roughing water line. Well, I was obviously mistaken. I thought I had chosen that hole, which would cause it to plunge straight down in the middle. Um, I'll have to do that next time. Um, I don't like plunging straight down with any tool, especially this one, but this tool is, has always been rock solid. It's actually a, a little bit of a noisy cut right now. Sorry about that with the mic. Um, I'm, I'm not using the tool changer today. Um, honestly, it's not a good reason, um, but for those of you that follow on Facebook and Instagram, we posted that I, um, that it's actually really, the, honestly, the first thing that's broken on the Tormach or this whole maintenance thing, and it's really my fault, as was clearly evident, which was that the power draw bar had a leaky gasket, and I actually noticed it a few months ago, but it kind of went away, and they came back, and I said, you know what, I need to just tackle this. So I tore the power draw bar apart, and oh my gosh, it was filthy inside with rust that's clearly from air compressor lines, not only obviously because that's the source of it, but also because of what it looks like. Um, so my fault, I'm a little embarrassed, um, and I'll do it, actually when I posted that, a bunch of folks said, oh my gosh, that's really cool, we'd love to see the more of it. So I'll do a quick video on the thing, not really too many tricks to it. Um, you shouldn't have to do it yourself, folks, um, in terms of it being any sort of a maintenance thing. I did go ahead and buy the seal kit from Tormach, which hasn't shown up yet. What I did was actually swap two of the seals out, which did the trick for now. Um, and the good thing was it was leaking, but it only leaked when it was retracted, so it didn't actually affect um, performance. But I didn't want, I had a weird day today. To, unfortunately, we had a level two snow emergency, which means um, I lose my daycare option for junior. And uh, so I um, had to. get to work until much later and I thought you know I really don't want to add on any sort of a hiccup with the tool changer again I don't mean to say that because there's no reason to think that I should but I'll just take it easy today try to get this this uh, site pusher made hopefully works okay okay so we may just have contributed a few seconds to the blooper footage reel which uh, is of course taking me years to compile any any good amount of footage for it. I'm joking uh, I should have stopped that. I knew that the plunge rate was a little bit too aggressive and it wasn't following that hole that we had drilled. So that was just, um, you know, that was just me thinking, um, you know, video mode and not machinist mode. So uh, learn your lessons, folks. Uh, and it's something I've had to do a lot lately as I've been busy and I like taking every lot of things on. And sometimes you just got to stop and think, okay, 10 minutes later from now, would I be better off having done something or not done it? And usually, the answer is, hold on, let me go tweak that little bit of code and fix it, even if that means it takes me you know, eight minutes longer to do this part or something like that. Anyway, it's no big deal. Um, the work piece should be fine, so uh, you guys will just have to wait for the blooper video to see what actually happens. I'm excited to show this fixture. I've been using this fixture uh, for the next op a lot lately, a little bit different um, use so I'm, I should work fine for this uh, the way we're going to use it. 
um, it's been a lot, it's been really handy for work where you need full access to the profile, but you don't have uh, you know, the ability to otherwise easily hold it down. So this is the only tool I've got that's long enough to really get in there. Uh, it leaves a great finish. It's a it's a long tool, so you'll get some shatter, uh, which is which is of course not great, but which shouldn't affect anything. And it's funny, I I don't know. Oops, yeah, there you go, shatter. Even uh, and you see the tool marks there, but even when you hear a little bit of chatter on the, the straight wall cutting, it uh, it still leaves a great finish. So I, I've enjoyed using it. It's a, a tool I originally bought for deep pocket machining on AR-15 80%. Now I wonder why I only got real chatter in the back left corner and really not much at all in the others. Obviously you're horrendously chip loading as you plunge that, basically that whole cutter into the corner. And that's something that high speed machining tries to avoid. And, and there's other strategies there to come clean it up or even drill it out. Not a big deal here, but would never want to do that uh, in production. Anyways, let's fast forward to the rest of this little cut here and, uh, get that fixture rocking to the outside. Okay, so how are we going to machine the outside of this thing in one op and have full access to it? Well, simple. I've been doing a lot of this, a bunch of different projects lately that call for this type of fixturing where I just take a little piece of half inch aluminum and I drill and tap whatever holes. Now, a lot of times I'll put some dowel pins in as guides, and honestly, I made a bunch of these. That's absolutely what you do because some of you are probably going to yell at me right now that this isn't going to be secure enough. Well, we'll find out. Um, it, uh, my answer is it's going to be it'll be secure enough if we just don't uh, get too crazy with the cut. So what we're going to do is just a strap clamp like that right down in the middle. Makes sense? Sure. How do we square it up? Simple. Just uh, keep that nut loose. Take a one, two, three block or something else that's square. Use that parallel. Hold it down. Center it about left to right. Nice and easy at first because you don't want to twist the part as you're screwing the uh, bolt down. And you can get a pretty good amount of torque on a half 13 um, bolt like this. I don't think we're going to have a problem. Um, we'll sweep it in here in a second and see just how close we are. In fact, I can already tell I'm starting to bow that clamp under a little, which I'm actually okay with. That's going to give it almost like a, sp I think a spring-like type clamping power. Um, I don't think it's going to move on us. Let's take a look. Okay, so the Heimer's in millimeters, so if we'll call that Y0, that's not Y0 by the way, but just for the sake of this, we'll go all the way across the part. We are we are four thou out from left to right, so that's the thickness of a sheet of paper across this whole length. Folks, that's plenty good um, for what we're trying to do here. Let's now use the Heimer to find our real Y0, X0. Okay, Y0. X0. Perfect. All right, here we go. Let's see if this uh, gives us any trouble. You probably hear it. You know, when a fixture doesn't have enough oomph to it, uh, you'll hear it in the tool mark, or um, you just, you'll just know, in my experience at least. And you know, it could, uh, it could um, kick out, and you want to be really careful because I will admit that fixtures like this can, um, you know, if it does work itself loose, you got to remember it can actually chuck that part around, and in this instance, if the strap clamp were short enough to let the part be escaped, um, that's a real risk, folks. Um, you know, I think we live in a world that overemphasizes safety in some applications, but let me tell you, ripping and throwing parts out of vices and so forth, um, you know, the lathe is actually an even better example. Someone was just telling me that one of the shops in town that runs a lot of um, um, turning centers. Actually, you know what I just noticed? I think we are going to have a problem on the next pass with the cutter clearing the strap clamp, so I may have to pause it. But um, someone didn't have a max speed rate on a constant service speed, and it, or they disabled it in the G code manually, and it uh, threw a part out, and I guess uh, took the guy's leg off or something. Crazy. 
Um, so I'm going to see here. What am I going to do? Let me think about this. Deciding whether to lengthen tool 11 or just come in with tool 100, our finish tool, and just do a couple cleanup passes instead. Going back to what I just said a minute ago, what's the right thing to do? The right thing to do is just to fix tool 11, just for uh, at least for this tool, uh, part. So plenty of clearance there. We can go short enough later. Obviously, I like running this tool short because you do get a lot more rigidity out of it. Okay, obviously we can tell at this point that the fixture is going to hold up just fine. So I just changed the G code, uh, or sorry, I reposted it now with a little bit longer, and that is close. But close doesn't matter, folks, because uh, if you're good, you're good. So one of the fun things about machining. Uh, what was I mentioning? No. Oh. It's so strange in Pathpilot getting used to the fact that you can actually interact with a computer when you're uh, cutting. It's not like mock where you're going to risk some, you know, gooey issue. So you can rotate the toolpath, you can look, look at the heat code, and I want to do a little segment on the run from Pierce and see how that works. I know folks were anxious to see about that. That was something I was never willing to do in, in mock. So finish up uh, this roughing pass and we will uh, clean up the outside. Honestly, that's like, <laughs> that service finish there is probably fine for this project, but um, we'll clean her up. I was actually supposed to film this project today with uh, my video editor that's been helping me, but um, because of the hiccup with the snow emergency, I had to um, stay home with William this morning, my son, which is actually phenomenal, it was really nice. We went to Home Depot, got some plumbing parts and for a rental property, and then we went over to AutoZone, I returned a, I couldn't get the oil drain plug out of my truck, I changed the oil this morning, and so I had to buy a different wrench, and then I realized, oh, I've got a socket, that's the way to do it, with a longer, um, actually put a torque wrench on it, which is easy to do, so. William and I changed oil for the first time. Together.